I tell you guys, some days it's so sweet. Some days it's so uh, so bland. Um, I normally order a double double, but taste is not very consistent. But it's funny how we always order it and uh, we love it so much, eh, you guys. What's going on, you guys? Today we're gonna work on the GTR. So I've gone through the old, uh, I guess, maintenance records from the old previous owner. He's pretty particular and uh, meticulous about the vehicle himself, which is fantastic for me or great for me. But I noticed in there, it doesn't mention anything about spark plugs. And I did go through the owner's manual and it says 60,000 miles or five years. And my car doesn't have nowhere near 60,000 miles, but it is older than five years. Uh, it is a 2012 uh, DBA and uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that today and I referenced some uh, I guess information on the internet how to do it and there's some good information. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below you guys uh, so you guys can reference it and uh, it looks pretty straightforward, pretty simple, it says two or three hours. Uh, we'll see how it goes you guys. but. Uh, Let's get started. The tools for today's job is pretty straightforward. Um, standard 5.8 spark plug socket with the uh, rubber gasket inside. Extensions, 10 mil, torque wrench, the smaller one, inch, not foot pounds. Ratchet, Allen key. I believe this is a, I don't remember that. And Pair pliers, flathead screwdriver, and, and some anti seize and extensions. So the Allen key size is a five. I know in the some references uh, they say it's a six, but it's, a, it's actually a five. And of course, the spark plugs. This one I went with the standard OEM spark plugs. I didn't go with the upgraded uh, race um, uh, style. And the part number is right there, you guys. So we're gonna do some, uh, I guess I'm plugging some electricals from the throttle bodies. So you're gonna make sure you uh, unplug the battery uh, from the battery terminal and uh, wrap it up in a towel just in case it touches anything that is uh, metal and can ground out the, uh, the uh, battery. First, we're gonna remove the four bolts from the manifold cover. So the next step is you're going to move, remove the air inlets from the throttle bodies. Uh, mine is upgraded, so it's a 8 mil, but I believe the factory ones are 7. Alright, so in the next step, it says to remove the throttle bodies and disconnect the uh, I guess the uh, plug but that is on a CBA apparently there's some coolant lines in it but on the DBA uh, there is no coolant line not that I that I can see so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the throttle bodies on and just disconnect the, uh, the electrical and I think we can save ourselves a step because I was referencing the uh, the read up. All we're doing is the EVAP lines. We're going to disconnect those and then the whole assembly, the upper intake manifold here and the throttle body should come off without uh, any issues and we don't have to remove the throttle bodies. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think on the CBAs there's coolant lines because I've Apparently there's coolant lines and I just don't see them on the C on the DBA. I don't know if it's the same applies to the uh, 17 onwards models, uh, which I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, no coolant lines, so we'll see how it goes. So the next step, we're gonna remove all the hoses, and there's five on this side. One, two, three, four five and to repeat the other side there's two 
one and two and then we'll disconnect the uh, sensor here that for the other side. One, one, two, and then 10 mil for the sensor. Realistically, you don't even have to remove the 10 mil. You just unplug it. I'm just gonna unplug it. There you go. And that stays in. So I'm just going to recap the uh, throttle bodies because I think it's a pretty important um, step. So for the CBAs, uh, you remove the throttle bodies. The four hex bolts or Allen keys bolts are held on. What they did was they just remove it to save yourself from hassle. They removed it and didn't disconnect the coolant line. Just don't disconnect the coolant line and set it aside. That way you don't have to drain the coolant. Probably save you a lot of hassle, so. All right, on the next step, what I did was I just removed the uh, zip tie plugs from the actual plug itself. One here and one on this side. So you don't have to cut the zip tie, just unplug them from the, the plug itself. And then put the screw flash head screwdriver in here, pop the clip and it comes straight up. So next up, we're gonna remove the, or disconnect the EVAP, two 10 mils, and un unplug it from here. And then we can move the EVAP out of the way so that we can remove the intake manifold. There you go. Now we're gonna set that aside here. So the next step we want to do is mark off some markings so later when you put the manifold back on that there's markings to line up with just in case there's some little bit of variance and movement on the uh, manifold so this ensures everything will sit down properly back to its uh, original um, place. I'm going to mark off one here. And then I'm mark off another one right here. I'm just using a standard uh, China marker here, you guys. So one mark here and one mark here. All right, so the next step, you guys, we're going to uh, remove the uh, eight 10 mil bolts. Two, 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 and two. Kind of sucks being short sometimes, you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna get a magnet just in case. The last thing you need is a 10, 10 minute job removing bolts into a two hour removing finding bolts. Isn't that the worst, you guys? So now that we got the uh, Eight 10 mils out of the way, remove the wiring harness from the clip, and it says just, we should be able just to uh, remove it straight up. All right, 
right awesome you guys so there we go so the intake manifolds off there is a little bit of oil residue here and apparently that is considered normal so there's nothing to be uh, worried about uh, I was a little concerned I thought that was oil was no good but in the read up um, they say it's considered being normal so I always write you guys on the DBAs leave to save yourself a, uh, uh, a step leave the throttle bodies on don't remove them uh, on the CBA again the reason why they removed it so that they don't have to disconnect the um, coolant line so that's a bonus for us you guys there is a little bit of oil residue but that's considered normal so don't be alarmed you guys see that so once the, uh, the manifold is off you guys I put a piece of towel down or a paper towel shop towel and uh, some towels just so that uh, nothing falls in there yeah you don't want to take any chances so in the read up what they did was they took off every spark plug and uh, coil pack but uh, for me for a guy like me I, you know with a uh, bad memory it could go really wrong uh, and um, the placement can be uh, a little off or whatever or whatnot so what I would recommend or I'm gonna do is one coil pack one spark plug at a time and then there's no chance you're gonna eliminate all the chances of mixing up the banks um, I highly doubt you're gonna mix them up you some of you guys are probably saying well you'd be pretty stupid to mix them up but you never know you guys and it just if you guys are you know more than full bolt on your wiring harness might be different and but there's no way you guys can uh, mix it up but we're gonna start with uh, this one first we're gonna unplug the uh, coil pack here and take the coil pack off man these that makes it really these plugs really hard to remove there we go push push clips there you go and 10 mil Actually, just come right out. There we go. Nice and simple. Next, you're gonna take your five eighths, and you want to go by hand just to get it. So apparently, they say it has to be a slim uh, socket because it just to clear the uh, the tube of the uh, coil pack so you might want to keep that in mind just so that you guys have the right one um. all right guys so we ran into a snag um, what I was just telling you guys earlier about the uh, socket for your uh, spark plug, it doesn't fit. It's too big. I thought it was a slim fit, but if you guys look in, if you, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a second step, not the first one, but there's a second one that won't allow that uh, socket to clear. So I just called a friend. Uh, hopefully his socket fits and uh, save me uh, a lot of time. That's the sucky thing about working on cars on a Saturday or a Sunday or a day that uh, some auto, ports, uh, auto parts stores are not open. We run into a jam. So it was one of those unforeseen things. I didn't know. I, how, how am I supposed to know until I get into it? And uh, that's why you have good friends. Hopefully they can uh, bail you guys out. All right, guys. So we're back in action. So one of my uh, good buddies went and got me a uh, 14 deep socket 
Uh, it's actually deep enough to accommodate the uh, spark plug head and the uh, ratchet itself. So make sure you guys get one that's deep enough. There you go guys. So now that we have uh, pulled out the uh, spark plug, it's a good time to check the health of the uh, engine and your spark plug. Uh, it's a clear indication of how your engine is doing. I'll put the link below uh, a chart of um, the spark plug health and uh, I guess engine health for your cylinder banks uh, for you guys to reference to see how your uh, engine is actually doing. So just for you guys as a reference it's the cylinder uh, the cylinder bank is what is it again? <laughs> Three uh, two, two, four, six. two four six one three five so odd and even so with the new spark plug throw some uh, anti-seize on it and it's ready to go back in hand tighten it till it's snug it's a lot of, it's a lot of thread There you go. So important you guys, quarter turn. There's no torque specs for it, just a quarter turn. I've watched other do it yourself, change your, and it's totally wrong. There's no torque specs. Again, you guys, quarter turn. So now that it's done, you're gonna put the coil pack back in. Take your 10 mil. And then five pounds, five foot pounds, or 62 inch pounds, inch pounds is the torque spec. And you're gonna plug your coil pack back in. And that's it. And now we're gonna repeat that for the other five. All right guys, so everything's all completed now. All six coil packs are back on. 10 mils are torqued down. Uh, 62 uh, foot, uh, inch, inch foot. And now everything is ready to go back in. So before we throw the intake on, just make sure the gasket is in line, and which is mine is. Everything's clear of debris and we're ready to go back. So I'm going to make sure the lines that we marked off earlier, they're lined up here and right here. There you go. So we're going to throw the 10 mils back in. Just hand tighten right now, but not tighten all the way. Hand tighten the manifold back in, but there's a sequence for the eight uh, 10 mils that you have to torque them down to. And what's the torque spec quote? 109, 108 inches. 108 inch inches, pounds. inch pounds. Uh, so what is what is the sequence? So it'll be one. Yeah, one here. Two. Two. Three. Yep. Four. Yep. Five. Six. Seven. And then eight. Eight. So the last one. Here. Let's uh, go here. Yeah. Here. 
No. One, yeah. two, three. Oh, like an, an X and an X pattern, right? Yeah. Okay. Two. Two. Three. Three, right? Four. Six. Seven. Seven. Last but not least, eight. Hey, there you go, guys. So next, we're gonna put the EVAP back on, right? Yeah, two hoses, one per bank. You're gonna plug this one back in. Right. This one. One. And then we're gonna plug this one back in. The vacuum line, right? And this side, this vacuum line. Plug the sensor back in and plug your throttle body back in. Okay. One more line over here. Two. Get that one and then the big one. And plug the small one back in. Oh, you did that already, Cloak? Mm -hmm. Make sure the clamps go back in. One in here. I'm going to put this harness back on the clip. There we go. Put the harness here. Put two plugs back in. One here. And one here. And don't forget, back here you guys, I almost forgot that. There you go. So let's go over this again. One, two, three, four, five. Plug the electrical for your throttle body. And then this side here is one, two. Plug the sensor in and plug your throttle body back in. Last but not least, your, uh, I don't know what back, or vacuum line back here. Other than that, you guys, Oh, and your harness here. And that, that's pretty much it. We're gonna put the throttle body hose back on and the cover. All right guys, so pretty much that's all done. Uh, like I said, I didn't have to remove the throttle bodies. It saved yourself quite a bit of time. Torqued everything down in the video. Um, overall, this, this job didn't really take a whole lot of time, even though it says three hours. This is my first time doing it and Took me roughly about two hours, two and a half hours. So now that I know what I'm doing, you'll probably cut down time by half. So hopefully this helps you guys out too. All right guys, thanks again for joining me in this week's uh, vlog. Hopefully uh, that was a helpful vlog for you guys that owns GTRs. 
I'll save you guys uh, a ton of uh, money and a ton of time. And if you enjoy working on your own vehicles and I guess appreciate that the work is done properly. And cause even though you go to the dealership, you don't know it's supposed to be done properly, but you never know. Right. But at least when you do it yourself, you know, it's done properly, it's torqued down properly and nothing's damaged. And, uh, thanks again for you guys. Well, you know what? I'm going to call tomorrow, call the dealership. I'm going to get a quote to see how much it is. And I'll put it at the end of the vlog here, you guys, but you guys, if you guys enjoy the vlogs, Hit that subscribe button, you guys. Turn on the notification and give us a thumbs up. And we'll see you guys in the next week's vlog. See ya.